We are in our new offices in Scottsdale, Arizona. We'll have some announcements going out. Grant Cardone just left yesterday as uh, we, we finalized everything. Our teams will be moving in these offices. We're very excited about it. I noticed he graffitied the wall in a couple of Oh, yeah. He, he marked his spot. <laughs> Great. Hey, welcome if you're brand new. This is 10X Owners Live, where we help business owners with their personal, professional, and financial goals. Are you ready to go? We're ready to go. This is 10X Owners Live. Let's go. The whole purpose of this show is to engage with business owners and be able to answer questions for people that will give them some insight and perspective on how to grow and scale a business. Not only leadership, but real life examples. This is the golden moment. I would do business with you right now. Okay, I, I want you guys to introduce yourself because there are a lot of new people that have never been to Owners Live before. All right, well, welcome to 10X Owners Live. I'm Brandon Dawson, and this is... Natalie Dawson. Even though uh, Josh called me Natalie Workman, I what? am officially a part of the Dawson family. I don't know if that's a nice sign, Nice try, Josh. Josh. Uh, I'm the executive vice president of operations here at Carbon Ventures. And, and tonight is all about finding... The good great. people and helping them become great. It still looks like Josh has some work to do. <laughs> yes, he does. Just kidding. Josh is awesome. But tonight, that is what we're talking about. How do you take a good team member, or maybe even, what if they're not even good? What if they're, Ooh, what if they're struggling, average, struggling, a struggling team member? Worse yet, a struggling team member, a poor team member, somebody who's really not engaged. And how do you turn that around and make them a great hire, great contributor, great asset to the organization. Yeah, and this is all part of the perfect hire series. If you've been following us for the last four weeks now, we've been talking about our awesome new webinar that's coming up. We'll put a QR code if you have not signed up yet. It's called the perfect hire. It comes up this Saturday, but your time to sign up is running out absolutely free, no charge. We guarantee your money back if you don't receive value. Hey, it's going to be a great 90 minutes going over real life examples of how to have the perfect hire. In fact, we're so confident you're going to learn how to have the perfect hire that you are guaranteed 100% of your money back if you don't hire one perfect employee in 2022. That is a guarantee. Look, two thirds of all businesses, 31 and a half million businesses fail every five years. The chief complaint, second, from the top of the list is can't find any good people. So you want to know how not to fail? Find good people and help them become great. What if you find good people and then they become average? So once you find, you find someone who you think is good, you hire them in, you both have great intentions, and then you're like, man, you're a weekend, two weeks in, a month in, and you're like, this is not a great person. What do you do? To fire engage. them immediately. No, we don't uh, fire them. I, uh, I, we're, we're hearing the, the audio. We're seeing that the audio needs work. Our team is working on the audio. So just bear with us as we are in this brand new space in Scottsdale and working out some new studio angles and all of the microphone uh, challenges. But with that, when you do have a team member who is disengaged, the first place that we go to is... What are the goals of the organization? Why should the or why should a team member put their all into the goals of the organization if you don't have clarity on what their goals are? So there's twofold, right? The organization has to have their goals, or the department, or the role, like the structure, the entity that they're going into. There has to be clarity of what the target even is. And so many businesses struggle with creating targets, holding people accountable to those targets. But then you can have all of that and really have a dialed-in business model. But if you don't understand what your team members' goals are, they're not really going to care whatever these targets are. They're just made up. They're something that you care about, but you have to figure out a way to bridge their goals to the goals of the role, the department, and ultimately the organization to keep them engaged and inspired. Because the reality is everybody has goals. And I think that this is something that we're very used to talking about in this 10X community. Like we're all goal-oriented and goal-setters Sometimes business owners think, well, my team members don't have goals, and yet they've never sat down to actually ask the question. Yeah, yeah. if you don't ask your people, 
if they have goals. You know, You're I've I've interviewed, uh, I've sat down and had at least four thousand PPF personal, professional, financial goals conversations with individuals. Ninety eight percent of the time, when I ask, has anybody ever sat down with you since you've been a young adult or an adult, and and asked if you if you need help setting your personal, professional, financial goals? Has anybody asked to help you do that? And, uh, and 98% of the time, the answer was never. Then I ask, have you ever done that? And people will say, well, I planned a goal or I had a goal, but they never learned to set goals and achieve the goals. I will tell you that in my career, with all the success I've had, the thing I'm most proud of is that I've helped business owners and team members learn how to do that and succeed at those goals. So if you want to know why people are disengaged or actively disengaged or demotivated at work, it's because no one's helping them visualize their success through your business. And we're going to teach you on this live call exactly how to do that. Well, you know, when you think of this premise of how do you turn a good employee or an average employee into a great employee, like why would they want to become a great employee? How are you selling them in the same way that you sell your customers, why they should work with you, why they should do business with you. You're selling your team on why they should actually take a job, listen to your mentorship. Ideally, you are a coach to those team members. So how can you pivot your mindset from not just sales with your customer, but sales with your team member? And then if you're really talking about sales with them, how are you selling them on their goals? Like what does your hiring process look like to first get them in the door? This is what we're talking about going deep into. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're going to do 90 minutes of breaking down how we do it. And, and, I, and I believe, and for those of you that have worked with us, and if you're new tonight, welcome to your first 10X Owners Live show. We're very passionate about goals around here. We're very passionate about people around we here. We are, and I think, I think, but most importantly, we're passionate about our show. I think by the beginning of March, we will be two years straight. Not one, right? Uh, on tax owners live. Yeah, yeah, just hitting the two year. We will by in March, we will be ha we will have been doing this 10x owners live every Tuesday night for two years. That's wild. We've only missed three. Only three nights. It was a holiday, an election, and Christmas. And Christmas. That was it. That was it. So so look, we're passionate about helping you, the business owner. We work with thousands of business owners every single year. What I like to do is say, if you're going to get advice or you're going to ask questions of people, make sure they're a living, breathing example. And for two years, I've been talking about Cardone Ventures. Follow what we do. Learn what we do. Show up. See how we do it. Look at our stats. Look at our results. Learn the exact same methodologies we build our business. We launched our business, if you're new, 30 months ago. And in 30 months from dead stock or start, I should say, yeah. no money invested in the business. This is one of our principles. We have generated at the end of this year, we'll have generated almost $58 million and tens of millions of dollars of profit with no money invested. Right. So, so this is why it's important, but here's what we know. How many employees we have today? 76. Eight. Was it 78? Oh, that was 70. We had we one or two every single day now. So so we're at almost 80 employees from startup 30 months ago. And, and what I want you to do is I want you to hear, last week we shared some of our employees' unbelievable success stories. I want you to hear some of our other employees' success stories because if you follow the leader and you model, mimic, and master what they're doing, then you can do it too. Because the number one question everyone asks is, how do you find great people? How do you align great keep people? And how do you keep great people? Those are the three hardest things to do in business, and no business has ever been great without great people. So why, who do we have? Come, who do we have? I Let's think bring, speaking of keeping people, what about Heather Block? I mean, talk about how long she has been working with you guys. Um, is she on here? She Heather? is. Let's bring Heather, <laughs> let's bring Heather up. Um, by the way, while we're waiting for Heather to get unmuted, how many employees do you have in your business right now? I'm just curious. I want to take a quick poll. Use the live chat 
we're live right now. East Coast, West Coast doctors. Yeah, 10, 1, 0, 10, 1, 32, 4, 160. Who's that? 160. Who's, who's got 160? Who's it? Jason. Jason. Oh, Jason Tindall. Hey, oh, Jason, how are you, buddy? Yeah, he does have 160. <laughs> so, so Jason's a good friend of mine from Vancouver, Washington. Um, look at all these number of employees. So, so as you're looking at this, uh, I want you to hear, because here's the thing. People ask me, how do you go from startup to doing almost 60 million without having to invest a bunch of cash? That's right. and, and, and I'm going to tell you the secret. Build relationships with people over long periods of time. And so if Heather's on here, is she on here? She should be, yeah. Hey, Heather. The reason I was able to do that is because Natalie, Heather, Candace, Aaron, I have a group of people, Rich, Hardigan, I have a group of people who have been with me for as long as 12 years in all my businesses that are, are helping build this organization that have seen what I've done with other leaders in other organizations, and they've patiently waited their turn to do it for themselves with us. So I want you to hear what it sounds like to have someone that's been with you 12 years, worked in three different companies, running different areas, but started, do you remember, was she on here? Yeah, she's on. Heather, I'm here. on here? You hear yeah, I'm here, first. guys. Heather, Hi. when we first brought you on, how, how many years you've been with me now? Almost 13. Wow. A million. And Heather, I think context is so important. As Brandon was just talking about, like you clearly, you've been with Brandon throughout so many companies. However, what employee number were you at Audigy? I was number 38. Number 38. So for the business owners that have, I see 32, I see 60. What is Audigy? Audigy. Oh, Audigy is, for those that are new, Audigy is the business I sold for 77 times 151 million in 2016. And Heather started at that company as employee number 38. Mom. Yeah, as a coordinator. <laughs> as a coordinator. Think about, think about how you get big. You got to have great people. You got to surround yourself with people who want to follow you, who trust you. As a coordinator, employee number 33. Was she, good, was she good or great at 33? Oh, she was good. That was good. <laughs> she was good. <laughs> what is she? Here's a more important question for everybody that's wondering. 13 years later, started out as a coordinator and now is a vice president at Cardone Ventures and an equity participant. So this is her opportunity. She's waited 13 years for this opportunity. How many times during that 13 years, Heather, did I put so much pressure on you to stretch your rubber band, which is a John Maxwell law and 21 irrefutable laws of leadership, law of rubber band. How many times do I stretch your rubber band and almost break it to where you were so upset that you thought about quitting? Uh, probably five times. Like then that's to the max of almost quitting, but there's like every day you stretch my rubber band, just to be clear. Heather, <laughs> why have you stayed with Brandon and the vision for 13 years? Like, could you walk us through like your, you know, what other business yeah. owners need to hear from that mentality and what has been put in front of you since day one? Yes, absolutely. For me, it's always been Brandon's magnitude of mission, the impact he wanted to create and who he wants to bring along with him and help create a path of success for. And he does not compromise. I think for me, I have a very competitive side to me and I want to, I want somebody who's going to coach and develop and train me, but but, but not just be, Brandon says this all the time. He doesn't want to be someone's boss. He wants to be a coach and he is the ultimate coach. So he provides the picture of where we're going. He, he says, here's the opportunity, but you got to step in. And along the way, I'm, it's my job to push you and to coach you and to stretch you. And he does that, but he does so with expectations, measurements. I know what my opportunity is. I know when I don't meet the expectations, he is very trans, very transparent, holds me accountable absolutely every day. So does Natalie. So does Buck. A, a lot of our team does. And he's set that culture. It's the culture that he's built. And he's done that ever since the first day that I met him. Um, it's been the most impactful thing. There was a short period of time where I did go work somewhere else. And I actually thought that I was going to enjoy that. But you know what? They didn't push me. 
they just let me, they just were my boss and it, I was very complacent. My rubber band was not stretched and I got bored. And, and now you've put yourself in a position. And by the way, the job she went to was a vendor of mine. And when I was in between selling businesses, the opportunity came up and I'm the one that recommended she yes. take advantage of that and, and, and elevate her career. So, so Heather, it's been 13 years. You run our learning development and content area of the organization, but you're a, you're a senior member of this executive team. And, and so when you think about what the next 10 years looks like for Heather, what, when you, when you go to work in the morning and when you go home at night, what do you sleep, eat, breathe? Your husband's part of the family. What kind like tell these people listening to this, that when they align their team, what does it feel like to what work? And what does it take to work at a place where you can pursue your passion, your joy, and your goals inside that organization? I, just gives me goosebumps right now because it's it's everything. There, there's not a when I'm I'm so aligned with what we're doing and where we're going and how we're gonna get there that it is not a question when I wake up in the morning. I don't I, I don't before I wake up in the morning, I'm thinking about everything that's got to get done today to help our clients achieve their personal, professional, financial goals, because you have created the path that when we do that, the business wins, their clients win, and then we win. So my husband is absolutely exceptionally aligned to that as well. We've got big goals in the next 10 years. And, and to do that, like, this is where we picked up and moved from Washington state, created the opportunity in Scottsdale, Arizona. We sold our house. We're renting down here and we're fully aligned, you know, when, as a couple that, which is something that Natalie and Brandon have have been the example of there are mentors from that perspective on how you tackle this as a couple, even though my husband, Nate doesn't even work in the organization. He knows what we're doing. He's listening right now. He, you know, he's a part of this as well. And every day, the grind that it takes in order to get to those, that big picture, it's, it's, it, there's no question. There's, there's no compromise. You do whatever it takes every single day, the massive action commit and figure the rest out later. And that's, that is what this organization provides. And that's what I'm also trying to be the example of for others around me, because I, I want to demonstrate that that's what's possible for others who are just coming into our organization. I want to build that culture with, with Brandon and Natalie. Here's my question. How many of you listening right now wish you had employees that talked about you and the opportunity like that? Put a 10X in the chat if you wish you had employees like that. This is exactly what we cover. This is what Brandon and Natalie and Grant are going to be covering at the Perfect Hire Training. If you haven't clicked that link yet, this is one of your last opportunities to do it. I'm going to ask Ashley Edwards to put that link in the chat so that you can join us this Saturday for the Perfect Hire Training. Speaking of which, you guys want to talk to Ashley? Yeah, let's talk to Let's, let's talk. Speed Thank time you, up. Heather. Thanks, Heather. Thank you, Heather. We love you. Love Let's you. Go to a newer relationship in the work. Yeah. So, Hi, uh, Ashley Edwards. Hi, Who is Dr. That? Ashley Edwards. Who's not newly. As Dr. Ashley Fishborn. Newly <laughs> married. That's right. Hi, guys. Dr. Ashley Fishborn. Because she just got hitched. So, Hi. Ashley, talk a little bit. You've been with us now at Cardo Ventures for how long? Almost two years. Almost two years. So, so not too long. After we started, talk a little bit about how you found your way here, because I think understanding the long term relationships that you build with people are very, very important. And, and you will attract, I'll give you a little hint, you will attract a higher caliber person to you when you help other people win. So, Ashley, why don't you pick it up from there? How did you find us? Yeah. So the, the reason that I found you guys is my mom has been a client of Audigy Group for uh, almost nine years now. So she's been a client of Brandon and Natalie's for a really long time. And the reason that I chose to come and work for them is because Brandon had decided he needed to start promoting himself. So he started a podcast and he and Natalie were doing a podcast together and just consistently creating content. And so I was able to start closely consuming their content, even more so than just through my mom's practice and her business and understanding the business principles that Brandon teaches and that we hear uh, on 10X Owners Live and through Audigy Group and everything else. 
And throughout that experience, uh, they started putting podcasts out about the things that they were doing. You know, Brandon's always manifesting and always talking about the vision of where he's going. And he and Grant did a podcast talking about chiropractic and saying they were going to go into the chiropractic space. And I got super excited. So I was still in chiropractic school and I reached out to them and I said, hey, my mom is actually coming up for an Audigy seminar with you. And I'd love to meet you guys. I've been studying you for a while. Natalie was my best friend. She had no idea I existed on planet Earth, but she she had put out so much content and inspired me tremendously, personally, professionally, and financially, as well as Brandon, of course. But because of that, I had an opportunity to reach out. And you never know, you may get stuck in purgatory in DMs, but sometimes you make it through, and I made it through. So they let me come up and meet them in person for... Um, for an event with Audigy Group. And I just said like, hey, I'm, I'm really interested in figuring out what you guys are doing here. I don't know what I'm gonna do when I graduate. And Brandon offered me an opportunity to say, hey, if you're interested when you graduate and you do all of these things, he asked me to read an entire list of books and they asked me to prepare. I went through an entire interview process, the same as anybody else with Cardone Ventures, presented on the core values, all of that. They wanted to make sure that I was the right fit. But when I came into the organization, I'd had six months of studying, like intently studying Brandon's concepts, his business principles, and reading all of the books that his mentors had written to be able to make up all of the success that he's had. And so I I had a huge opportunity to learn throughout that time based on their recommendations. And then I came in January of 2020. And and, and here's, here's an important thing. A lot of people that have met Ashley is like, I can't believe she's a doctor and she's such a good communicator on the business development side because she works with Josh in the business development side. But see, the thing I know is Ashley has unbelievably high belief because when her mother came to work with us at Autogy, she was a startup and she became one of the top 3% practices in North America within 36 months working with the management company I built. So Ashley had already seen what happens when you work with someone and she already understood personal, professional, financial goals because they used to sit at home and talk about the things her mom was learning. So her parents were clients that were unbelievably successful. And so the reason I bring that up is because sometimes your best hire may very well be someone else that you've been helping relative, yeah. friend, or referral source. Yeah. Is mm-hmm. that law of magnetism? That is, that is law of magnetism. Yeah. Output amplifies input. Our best hires have been referrals from our best team members. So you want to know how you get big fast? Make sure you create a dynamic, close team that executes, performs, and wins together. They will bring you better employees. And what's funny about this story to me, even Buck's story, Ashley's story, we have a handful of other just incredible part of Ventures team members who have come through strange outlets. It yes. seems strange. Direct messages on Instagram or they listen to a YouTube video or a podcast. And I want to level with you guys. When you were first creating this, like when we were putting out the podcast, whether it was you or the DMs when you were listening to it, we did not have a 77 person team. We had 14 members, the business, we were trying to get momentum, no office, no office, but the office that we showed you was not I think we, we, were we, even, we had just partnered with Grant. We didn't even have a so real business. So early. No and so people see what they see today and think that it's always been like this, but it has not. And it was not when these team members joined Heather at 33 team members with Audigy. There was no fancy stuff. There was no 10 X owners live or social media channels. But in those conversations, it's around what are the goals and how can you show and demonstrate that you are consistent in the way that you promote and talk about the things that you're passionate about, which is helping the clients that you serve. All of you guys are in business to help clients do something to solve some sort of problem. Your ability to just talk about those things and share that passion, even when it feels like, man, there's probably five people watching you can have somebody like Ashley or Buck or Matt Hendricks listen to those the, those pieces of content and really resonate and connect with why you're in business. And that's actually how it starts to build a team like this. And, but you know what you do is you get so upset. You start promoting the employees that are like a stone in your shoe. You start promoting the ones you struggle with. You promote 
the ones that leave. You complain about them, you talk about them, you spend time referencing them. You get in front of your team members and you talk about the employees that aren't working hard enough or the family members that are letting you down that you've got on the payroll. You promote the failure and the picture of what failure looks like and what you think is what you say, what you say is what you do, what you do becomes your legacy. The resilience in building business is finding the people that you can promote into strength, not promoting the things that are wrong or not promoting weaknesses. I like what you said there, Natalie, where you talked about the fact that they might look at the picture of what we're doing today and what we built. And, so, and it's we talked about this like three weeks ago. It's the imposter syndrome. Yeah, but, yeah, but I don't have a, a studio and mics and I can't inspire people. And it really does come down to being able to sell the dream and sell the goals. Of that. And we have, and, and here's, I promise you, I see some of the names of the, the business owners we've been working with who have learned to sell the dream. We have, uh, we share wins every single morning. We have business owners whose profitability is up three or four times where it was in the history of the business. We have business owners that are seeing 50 to 100% revenue growth because they're learning these principles. All of them have something in common. The individual that had the profit growth, they had to fire some of their longest term employees because they were not and did not get on the mission. They were, they were obstacles to success. The people who've seen 50, 100% growth, they've attracted the right people into their organization by talking and communicating about the right things. So what we're going to talk about on this live call for 90 minutes with Natalie Grant and I, because we're talking about our success stories, Grant has people that are multi-millionaires that have been working with him as employees because of the structure he created to keep and retain great people. And so it, it, it's an art to learn this but you should learn it from somebody who's sharing with you the example of how to do it. So we're so excited about that live call. And of course, Ashley, we're so proud of you. I love you guys. Hey, let's, love you too. Thanks, Ashley. Let's get the link back in the chat and let's drop the QR code one more time. I just want to make sure if you're just joining, I see that we the numbers have popped up a little bit. So there's some new some new faces here that weren't with us about 20 minutes ago. So if you're just joining, we're actually going to, to Brandon's point, we're going to spend some time with you this Saturday and go through methodically how to find the perfect hire, how to attract and align once you get that team in place and how to keep them. So if you, yeah, if you're hearing these stories from Heather and Ashley, we've got another great, another great employee testimonial coming up here in just a second. If you're hearing this and you're like, damn, no one on my team would ever sound like this. If we pulled your team member up right now and asked them these questions, what would they say about you? What would they say about your business? You know, Brandon always says leadership, define leadership. Anybody know? Let's take a quick test. What's, what is the definition of leadership? Who knows? Who's a, who is a, what's my definition? That's right. That's right. Who knows what Brandon Dawson's definition of leadership is? So that's, right. that's right. That's right. Look, if you want to build a massive team, make other people's success easy. And that's clearly what you've done. Here. You know, that's you're hearing the story. Well, and, and 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 that's what I have to go to sleep with every night. What's that? How to do that? And am I being a good leader? Because mm. when it's hard, it's hard to be a good leader because you're under a lot of pressure. I love that you're getting a little bit vulnerable right now because for you guys, it might seem like, oh, we're just popping all these team members up here, and it's just this fairy tale land of this is so easy. And once you have the steps. There is a process for getting people attracted to you, but make no mistake that this is a journey of development and constant iteration. And the way that you iterated from Heather Block has seen this transformation over 12 years, but I'm sure it's been even longer than that. Of like, what does leadership look like? And how do you, even if you have six or 160 employees like Jason Tindall, well, what do you have to be in order to get 300 employees? And then what do you have to be in order to get a thousand team members and to be a leader that can truly create a vision around that where those team members stick with you? And, and, and I want to say something because you've heard both in Heather's case and Ashley's case, you heard us all tell each other we love each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they've heard it. They but, I, but, but see, the team that works for me understands that that's a whole... The difference with a friend culture or a family culture where you say, I love you, that ain't our culture. 
the culture of love says that you're going to be better. You're going to be more committed. You're going to have somebody's back. You're going to support them. The love that we have is in the trenches. We have each other's back. Love. And, and that is a different kind of love because my expectation of somebody who's inside that bubble that we're close to. So we don't have that conversation with every employee. We have it with people that we've been tested with. And there's a higher level of accountability with people that are in that kind of bubble with you. And so when you hear us say it, don't confuse that as, oh, hey, I love you. It's like, no, dude, I got your back. I love you. I can depend on you. And I know with certainty you're going to be there tomorrow and you're going to represent the organization at the absolute highest level of commitment. And you can define what that commitment is for the people we serve. Those are people I want to love. And those people, there's a transformation process. Like I think about the stories that I've heard with Heather and even, you know, I've been with you and Heather for the last eight years. I've seen all of us transform and you respect people that are able to rise up to an opportunity and maybe not know for certain that they can, they can do this next thing, that they can go to this next level, but they try. And that is one of those elements that you are looking for as you are hiring a team member. It's, they're coming in with a certain skill set, and that is okay. But how do you create this culture? How do you develop yourself as a leader so that they are interested in transforming and they trust you to help them transform your definition of leadership, making other people's success easy? Well, their success isn't like, oh, here, I just showed up and I did these things and it was super, it was super fast and efficient. Like there's a transformation when somebody has success in a role and levels up to this new area of success. But then that has to keep happening over and over again for your business to continue to grow year after year after year. And, and the job of a leader is to grow the competency, grow the skill set, grow the courage, grow the humility, grow the determination, grow the resilience of the people that you're building through, because if you're pulling those people out, replacing them all the time, then it becomes disruptive for everyone. And I have found with my key, my, my absolute, see, when I sold Audigy, every single employee stayed through the earnout because I incentivized all of them, paid out 14, $15 million to my team because without them, I couldn't have done it. And that was their reward for helping me build it. But here's the point. I stretched them and stretched them and stretched them beyond their entry point into the organization. Heather came in as a, what she say? As coordinator. a coordinator. So that would, in our organization, and Heather, you can correct me if I'm wrong on your specific career path, but in order to move from a coordinator, it's not like she just woke up one day and was the vice president. That's a coordinator to a senior coordinator to a manager to a senior manager, to a director, senior to a senior director. director, to a vice president. That's what, seven different moves in employee maturity is what we call it how do you how do you continue to want to grow how do you mature as an employee uh through the organization well the leader has to be able to create that path for them that's and john the success Ma and, easy and john maxwell talks about law of the lid so if you're a leader and you have a low lid your people will grow to your lid if those people want to pursue success beyond where you've helped them they have no alternative but to move under or away from your lid and then grow. And I will tell you, I've seen so many organizations lose their remarkable people that outgrew where they were at because they didn't have a path to grow inside the organization. So this is one of the key things that we're going to be talking about for certain. Right. Hey, let's bring up the dad I never had, Sticker Rich, Rich Hardigan in the cardigan. One of my favorite dudes at Cardone Ventures. Wow, that was a lot of names. Yeah, yeah. you guys. Are, I, I mean, you guys have your own thing going I have not gotten that introduction since the day I was hired. So excited about that. Thanks, Buck. So, Rich, uh, introduce everybody who you are and what your role is. Sure. Rich Hardigan, uh, VP of Operations for 10X Health now. Uh, I've been with Brandon since 2013 in a, a former business called Stratus Dental Group, where I started as an a strategic business unit manager uh, working on a five function team to help scale uh, private practice dental practices. So eight years and, and Rich is another one came in as a manager 
and you heard Natalie. So we have what's called the EMM, and we're going to talk about this, the employee maturity model. See, if you can show your employees that you want to grow them from a manager to one day being a partner in a business, that takes a big vision, right? And you need to create headroom in your organization so they can see themselves succeed. And Rich put himself in line and he has plugged away at each one of those growth opportunities, doing the things from a competency, from a, a, a skill set, and, and what's the other one? A competency, objectives. objectives, and skill set. He's been able to accomplish his objectives and his goals and develop in order to take on more responsibility and, and more uh, 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 leadership roles that now in a company that we just merged with and, and, and that we believe, Grant Cardone, I've never seen him more excited about anything since I partnered with him than 10 X Health. He's Jack. And Rich was tapped for the opportunity to be the newest vice president of operations for that organization, which honestly is going to be a wealth creation vehicle for Rich's legacy with his family. There's no question. That's how big this opportunity is. So Rich, talk a little bit about all the, like you had to, you've had plenty of your rubber bands being stretched too. Talk a little bit about the resilience and, and plugging through. And in that moment where you might want to give up or quit or walk away, which you saw a lot of peers do that working mm -hmm. with me because we push hard. What does it take to hang in there and stick with it? I think, you know, for me, I always need something to, to believe in and to buy into. That is just, that is how I am built. And if I don't have that, I'm not going to give 110%, 150%, 200%. So I could see that trend with previous employers uh, leading up to Stratus. And then I worked with Heather Block away for a while. And I just remember that call from Heather Block. And Heather Block said, she knew that that was important to me, that I needed something to buy into, to invest into. And she said, we are building something big. You need to go talk to Natalie. And this was... Thanksgiving of 2019. And so we scheduled a call with Natalie. And I remember on that call, you and Natalie painting such a clear picture of where Cardone Ventures was going to go. It hadn't been built. I was employee eight. So you weren't even at that number yet, but you could create that vision that I said, I'm in. This is what I want. I'm in. So I want all of you on the call to think about that idea of, of people's why really matters with your organization. And are you clear with that vision? Because there are those who are just like me who need that to say, whatever it is, I will jump. I'll make it happen, even if I don't have instructions. And that's, that's exactly where we are. You know, a year and a half later, we're right back to, we're going to figure this out. We're making it amazing. And we have all this knowledge now of success and failures but we have that history of reflection to grow on. And, and now, so here's what's important because how is it that we can move so fast and go from basically me, Natalie, and Heather, right? That's Heather was employee number three at Cardone Ventures. She was number 33. I just want to know who was employee number one. You? Me. <laughs> Why am I employee number two? Because Grant did say Natalie and Preston. Thank you. The boy number one, I would just like to officially state my <laughs> to the boy number one. Okay. Well, I'll be employee number two. It doesn't matter. Um, so, so as long as I'm in charge, as long as I'm in charge, you can be whatever number of boy you want to be. So, so it's all about compromise. That's how you stay married too. So, 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 so here's the thing. Um, we could bring on another three or four people the the, 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 the ability to seed your organization as you get bigger with people that you have a legacy with and you have a long-term relationship with and you can trust their ability to have resilience and to deliver. That is what allows you to get big fast. And see, most of you are challenged with just hiring your first employee or you're challenged with just getting one of your five employees to be a model employee. But what I want to talk to you about and invite you into the conversation, and we're going to put the QR code back up. I want to invite you into the fact that your employees are challenged the same way. They're challenged with finding a business owner that's going to teach them how to succeed at goals that they don't even know how to set. Yeah. 
And when you can teach people to set goals and lead them through how to accomplish and succeed at those goals, they'll trust you and love you for life because it unfortunately is not something that many people are taught to do. And you could be the first person that could be the catalyst to changing the lives of the people who follow, trust you, serve you, and build with you. And, and here's the big thing. I created Oddity and all that value by aligning every one of my 186 team members from zero to 186 when we sold. But we did it by aligning and, 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 and attracting 290 business owners that had 3,600 employees all doing the same thing. So there was an ecosystem of almost 4,000 of us that were all living every single quarter with setting personal, professional, and financial goals. And that's how we built our business through our clients' businesses, through their teams. And we used to run a meeting every two years called the Team Summit, where 1,000 people, 1,500 people would come out. And we would recognize and reward the success that those contributors had in the businesses. And so creating a massive culture, a movement that attracts the right kind of people to you, it's the single biggest struggle in business. But when it gets going, the culture will go out and find those people and bring them to you. And that's how you get massive law of big mo growth, another Maxwell law, and accelerate to a massive value because you have people that care about what they're doing every day. Okay, so in this instance with Heather, Ashley, Rich, they've all gone on from a, a sort of good state to a great state. It's like, you know, Rich, Heather, and leadership positions for the organization. Do they take the same path to get from good to great, or are there different ways to go from good to great? Well, that's a great question, and that's the job of the business owner. Natalie can tell you all those levels that she talked about. The reason that we know what those are is I think we built those seven or eight years ago, and we call that the, the EMM, the Employee Maturity Model, from how to come in at any point and accelerate to a future partner. Because, see, I need to build hundreds of future partners. I get asked, how are you going to build a big organization with hundreds of companies? And I tell them, I've got to build thousands of team members. And, and it's a long-term game. It's not a short-term game. And, and so, so people can enter at different points, but you have to be able to show them their contribution. We call it a TPP, top performer profile. How do you succeed to be at the top of whatever area in the business you're at? It's your job as a business owner to teach your team to do that. When you teach them to do it and they get there, then it's your job to move them to the, and give them an opportunity. A lot of you get trapped with your your employees. I just had this conversation today with a key contributor. They, they are trapped. So what happens is they get to a place where they're overwhelmed. They feel stressed. They they can't see the forest or the, what is it? The trees. The, they can't see the trees through the forest. No, forest through the, the forest through the trees. So all of a sudden they feel like, oh my God, I'm overwhelmed. It's your job to get your people to feel that way. Because if you don't get them to feel that way, they will not naturally get themselves to feel that way. They're not built and business isn't built to do that. Athlet, athletics is, uh, uh, there's different programs that are like, like academic programs that force people to push as hard as it can to be at the top. Even entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship does that. does that. But but in business, it's not natural. And so, so if you could get your people to be like, I am so overwhelmed, that's actually the right place for them to be. And it's the right place for the business to be because Incremental improvement, granular incremental improvement on what you can prove works. That is the definition by Jim Collins of innovation. And so you cannot granular incrementally improve unless you're in the top 10 percentile of doing what you're doing because you have too much room to get up there. So you got to push your people. Then you got to evolve and develop your people to understand the bigger picture of how they move higher up that ladder. That's the EMM. And for you business owners, we call it the OMM, the owner maturity model, because you got to do the same thing. If you're not growing, your people have nowhere to go but gone. What about the OPP? Any of them got teeth? 
So many, so many. So how many of you want to learn about the maturity model? How many of you want to learn about top performers? How many of you want to learn how to structure this? I'm sure it all sounds great to you. You're like, man, I would love to have all these, but you don't quite know how to put the pieces together so that you can implement it into your business and find amazing, remarkable people like what you've heard from tonight. Well, what Natalie has done, I asked her to break down because we, we're going to be at 80 employees going to 500 in the next 24 months. I asked Natalie to reverse engineer all this work that we're talking about and isolate the very specific key components by working with our leadership team and the people that are our highest performing inside the organization that have been with us two years to, to, to 13 years. And as a team, isolate down the very specific elements that have allowed us to magnetize this group together. Then break it down to the components that we can teach. And on that 90 minute live call. So when Grant Cardone saw what we were doing, we brought him in and looked at it. And he contributed what he's been able to do. And it threw an accelerator on this program. So Grant went from this is great, guys, to I want to teach this with you. I want to be a part of this. This is how we're going to teach businesses and entrepreneurs to, to, to bust out and blow it up and take full advantage of their market opportunity. But every one of those market opportunity needs someone who wants to take advantage of the market opportunity. And if you're not committed to building a team and you're not committed, committed to making it massive, then you cannot create massive value for you. And if you don't demonstrate that for yourself and be willing to teach others, you won't keep people that want that. And the thing about communities is that when people leave where they're at and they're actually good at what they're doing, they don't normally reinvent their career. They normally become the new competitor. So instead of creating future competition because you're thinking too small, join us for this live call and learn how to put the elements in place to find, attract, align, develop, and retain remarkable people. I want to see everyone bring their phone out. We see your faces. We got a whole TV grid with you. I want to see your phones. I want you to open your camera. And I want you to, on that camera, you're going to go ahead. I'm looking for you. I'm looking for the, where are you at, iPad? Where are you at, Dorina? I don't see your phone yet. Where is it at? Katie, where's your phone? Gabrielle, where's the phone? Because here's what's going to happen. If you've already signed up, I want you to take a picture and I want you to post it on Instagram at Brandon M. Dawson, at Natalie still working. Yes, it is. At Natalie Workman, ignore the Workman, but that's still her Instagram. I want you to tag them and post it if you've already signed up. If you haven't signed up, I want you to scan the QR code and I want you to get signed up. Get involved. Oh, perfect. Let us training. help you and teach you and show you exactly what we're doing so that you can grow bigger, better, faster, more impactfully and pursue your goals. What's the guarantee again? You're going to do the guarantee, guarantee is. Worst case, you're going to waste 90 minutes. Guarantee, though, is that you're going to hire the perfect employee who might just help you blow it up in 2022. Money back, 100%. Wow. Guarantee. Guarantee. I'll even throw Bucky in on this. That's deal. right. Oh. I don't know what that means, but I'll come over. Whatever it is. Come on massage. over. Come on down. <laughs> All right. Don't, don't go crazy here. All right. We do have a couple of guy. hands raised. And we want to Sure. Let's do it. Yeah. Hard. We got time for a couple quick questions. I see Russ with his camera on. Russ, let's get you unmuted. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, buddy. Good to see you. It's great to see you guys. I appreciate this as always. I mean, I, I think I raised my, I know I raised my hand earlier more to just give a testimony, like with this people stuff. Um, you know, I've got, you know, now four people that are just like right there with me. I've got the best team I've ever had, but four like that, you know, I wanted, so the other day specifically, two things specifically is the other day, my, you know, guy that's been with me the longest and he's still just as hungry and right there. He said, bro, like, I feel like you know, this is going to be a fortune 500 company. Like the team is, and you, you guys have said this, like they don't believe you at first. And he said, the team believes you now. And so that was huge. And then I interviewed a girl that we just hired and I did the PPFs. And she said, um, she goes, nobody's ever, wow. Nobody's ever asked me that. And she said, she interviewed with every fitness company in town. This girl's really good. 
And she said, no, but nobody did that. So just more of a testimonial to, to you guys. And, you know, I appreciate it. Like this, this stuff works. It works, but you got to, it's not an easy ride. I've had people quit. I've had to fire people, you know, and still going through the process, but you know, it's like you get a little momentum and then you get, you know, one person with you, then two, then three, and it goes. So uh, not really a question. Yeah, and just it, to, it is, Russ, we have people quit and we have people we have to fire too. It is, this is the four A's, acknowledge, accept, take action towards what you want, which is finding remarkable people and keeping up and, and then attack it as you gain momentum. And that's just how you have to view the world when you want to do something massive. The, the thing, yeah, and the thing is, thank you. One thing that's happened too that's been hard, kind of hard for me is I have a girl that she weeded, she's great girl, great trainer, like such a good person. But it's like the, with our KPIs, she was just, she, she, we were, my manager was driving her and she weeded herself out. And it's hard, you know, those are people in the past I've kept because they're good people and they're doing a, a good job, but they're not really in it to win. So, but in the long run, it's the right thing for us and for her. You just have to figure out how to protect the circle. And especially when you have a a handful of team members and you're building into this dream that feels terrifying for you as a business owner. It's like, how do you make sure that the people that you're alongside, like Buck was right there with us early on, just willing to do whatever it took in order to get to this next phase. But if Buck would have been like, Oh, I'm good where I'm at. Or we talk about, I don't know. Balance, do I have to move to Washington or Portland? It and then all of a sudden move to Miami and move here. It would have totally taken us off target. And if we weren't so vigilant about not allowing that in the environment, maybe we would have five or 10 employees and that would be it because it's such a suck on your time as a business owner. And so how do you start pivoting to, wait a second, the people around me, everybody around me should sound like Buck, should sound like Ashley, should sound like Heather to where they are side by side with you fighting for the business goals. And if you don't have that, maybe not a hundred percent of your employees need to have that, but the people you rely on and the people that you're spending time with and that you need to help build with you, they have to be all in, in the belief that you are going to go where you want to go. And if, if that's not the case, like you have to figure out how to transition them or attract the right people, which come out, hang out with us on Saturday morning and we'll be going through exactly how you get the new team members to help you get to where you want to go. And, you know, we've seen uh, pushing your team members for every one of the great people that you're hearing talk on here that have been with me. Somebody gave up right before we were going to acknowledge them because they lost belief that they were going to be able to succeed. They gave up and took the easy route out. And what I'll tell you is that I want to have the reputation and I tell every one of my key performance or key people, I tell them, you're never going to know when I'm going to promote you. And I may just be testing you to see if you're resilient enough to have the patience to be an example to others that you waited your turn. On the other hand, some people, we grab them right away because we believe they're ready for the situation. So when you create an environment where people are patient, they wait their turn, they continue to press in to create confidence because every, every great decision comes with the more confidence you have. I would say you as a business owner, your job is to create confidence with your team that there's massive opportunities. And I would say your job to articulate to your team members is it's their job to create confidence in, that you can trust them. So when those opportunities present themselves, you have someone to take advantage of. I love what Brandon Soroka put in the chat. I've been putting up with average results for years. Now that I'm pressing the average resulters walk away naturally and the top producers have produced more. Also see an interest of new talent reaching out to us. Top, like the people in your environment that have that capacity are not at that level. They're not operating at a high performance level because they're around people who are average. So your inability to address that is also stifling the people who could be your Heather Blocks or could be your Rich Hardigans or could be your Candaces because they know that you're just okay with accepting average and you're not really actively pursuing the goal. So how do you shake that up if you recognize that that's the environment that you're in right now and even you know, get some new team members in there to help create that and reinvigorate the team that you have? So awesome. Great. Hey, before we close out, I want to just make one quick note. 
Signing up is really the first step. Committing to coming at 11 a.m. Eastern on Saturday is how you're going to create real success in the business. Grant Cardone always says 90% of any room is going to fail because they're not willing to make the commitment to show up. Right. You know, so I want to make sure you block your calendar. 11 a.m. Eastern. We want to see you at the perfect hire training. And look, if you're, if you're working by yourself or you're an employee and you have to be on this, this is the stuff that you can master to take to a business owner that's got whatever they're doing works, but they don't know how to build a big team. This may be the very thing that you master to become a partner to a business owner who needs somebody to run the company for them. And, th and that is how I started my first career, taking over a business, getting 50% of a business that the owner was tired and needed somebody to run it for them. So if you want to, your entree in, you might as well learn it while you're where you're at by creating massive value for the people you're with. Love it. This is where I like to ask for your notes. What did you pick up tonight? It was actually a lot. There was a ton, a ton of value tonight. Actually, so, is that surprising? Well, no, sometimes we have like a, a segment of, of value and then questions and answers. Tonight, it was like 80% value with very small Q&A at the end. So it was, it's actually more value than we typically deliver on an owner's live. And so I'm curious, I saw a few of you writing the notes down. What did you pick up tonight? What were the things that you're going to learn? What are the things you're committing to? What are the things that you're going to implement in your business? Or what are the things that you're curious about? Whoa. There's Brandon's Brandon notes. Crazy. Brandon. All right. Brandon took Love notes. It. Who else took notes? Right? That's awesome. So Whatever I, it takes every single day. This is great. Whatever it takes. Yeah, thanks. Brandon took notes for everybody. Everybody thank Brandon for the notes tonight. He took all your notes tonight. All right, listen. Uh, truly, we love this 10X community. Thank you for the team that we're on tonight. We're so excited about helping you guys impact your own success through your team members, being that example to you, helping you. Uh, as long as you're willing to show up, we're willing to show up. And we'll be there irrespective if you're there, because that's our commitment. So right. thank you for joining us tonight and welcome. Uh, welcome uh, and thank you for joining us for another episode of 10X Owners Live. All right. Any questions about this coming Saturday for the Perfect Hire training? Josh Dawson is going to answer your questions right now. The whole purpose of this show is to engage with business owners and be able to answer questions for people that will give them some insight and perspective on how to grow and scale a business. Not only leadership, but real life examples. This is the golden moment. I would do business with you right now.